Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is the most heavily anticipated game of 2024 when it comes to the FPS genre. And honestly, guys, they did deliver this time around. I haven't played Call of Duty seriously in years. And anybody that's familiar with the channel or the background of the channel, you know that Call of Duty is one of my favorite games of all time. And it's finally nice to see them taking at least some form of traditional Call of Duty and bringing it back to the masses. So I'm excited that we've got something a little more traditional when it comes to the Call of Duty, you know, community and what you'd expect from a Call of Duty game. But there is uh, some caveats to this because this time around, just like Modern Warfare, we've got settings that have their own settings. So we got some stuff to go over. And today we're going to go over the best controller settings that you can use in game. And a majority of these will actually work for console as well as PC. So depending on what you're playing on, go ahead and hop in and check it out. I'm pretty sure you will get some benefit from using these particular settings. And there are some that I will leave to opinion. It's going to be up to you to decide what you like better, but for the most of these settings, it's going to be across the board. You want to have them enabled or disabled. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video. All right, let's go ahead and get into today's video. And obviously, guys, I'm using tactical for my button layout, but I highly suggest that you go ahead and use a custom layout for yourself rather than using one of the pre-built presets and i say this because in today's day and age modifying your button layout to better suit even the game mode you're playing is a huge benefit but i've been playing call of duty for so long with the tactical button layout that it's almost impossible for me to swap away from it with that being said the stick layout preset is going to be entirely up to you if you need to invert your sticks or swap your sticks etc go ahead and check that out but the first thing we're really going to talk about is the sensitivity of your joysticks and i highly suggest that in any fps game that you have the ability to if the horizontal and vertical can be changed independently you always have your vertical lower than your horizontal how much you're going to need it to be different depends on the game you're playing but down two seems to feel right here in black ops 6 and this is going to essentially give you more vertical precision and a little bit more recoil control overall when you're actually trying to get in a serious gunfight now do not enable the simplified control presets or the low motor strain presets you're not going to need them and if you want to change to the L1 ping button, if you're playing Warzone, etc., something like Search and Destroy, then I highly suggest you enable it. If not, then the custom preset will allow you to do a lot more in terms of what's going on. Controller vibration, you need to disable it. Even if you like it for whatever reason you have, it's going to be throwing off your aim. And if you're a person using the motion sensor or gyro function in your controller, it's even more of a detriment to the game for you. Even the most micro vibrations can throw off your controller and later on in dead zone, we'll actually be using that to understand if you need to change your dead zone. Now trigger effect, we're also gonna disable. We don't need that for the PlayStation 5 and you don't have it on Xbox and all these settings will work across all platforms except the trigger effect now dead zone inputs here this one is interesting so we're going to go into the sub menu here and we're going to test the dead zone first to see if we need to have any now if you see movement in your stick right now for any reason other than you moving it like i'm doing then you definitely need to add some dead zone now what i would suggest is also shaking your controller and if you shake your controller like i'm doing right now and nothing happens then you can stick with these settings with a dead zone of three on the left stick for minimum and a maximum of 75. This means your left stick will actuate at a much lower degree than your right stick, giving you less precision, but more snappy response when you're moving. On the right stick, however, we're going to go with three and we're gonna go with a right stick of max of 90, which again, allows you to not bottom out the joystick before you get the full uh, entire value 
with the joystick. Now triggers will go ahead and turn those to zero and zero. This means that when you pull your triggers, they're going to fire much more responsibly. And that is going to be the first tab with the controllers here in Black Ops 6. The aiming tab is where we're going to start doing some major changes and it's going to benefit us the most with our aim assist. As you can see, we do have aim assist enabled. But under the sensitivity multiplier, we're gonna go ahead and change a couple of these 2.9 rather than 1.0. This essentially is going to give a slower sensitivity feeling rather than a one-to-one -one feeling in different moments of your gameplay. So a good option is to bring it down for the third person as well as the tablet and your ADS. Now in the ADS and potentially the ADS focus multiplier, you may want to bring this down a little bit further. It depends on your preference. For me, I kind of like this feeling, but at the same time, with those different attachments that allow you to gain focus on normal weapons, it may be an option for you to look up. Look inversion, I'm going to stick with standard, but if you like look inversion, then go ahead and change that to your preferred option. Aiming, we are going to also have some advanced settings and look inversion obviously went over, but the transition timing, we want to be instant. This is going to give that FPS arcade feel from the Call of Duty that you remember from yesteryear. On the other hand, with the third person ADS correction type, I do prefer assist, which just feels better, at least in my preference. Now the aim response curve dynamic seems to feel the best and it adds the most benefit to aim assist, at least from my point of view. However, linear is definitely going to be a much more responsive option if you have a perfect controller. If you have any dead zone, it's not going to be a great option. The per optic sensitivity is definitely up to you. I don't really feel it to be necessary, but it will mess with some other settings as well. So I keep that off. However, you may want to tinker with it yourself. Go ahead and try it and see what you feel is beneficial to your gameplay. Now, with that being said, we do want to keep aim assist on. We do want to turn motion sensors off because it's odd. If you can play with it, you're probably a beast with it and you can turn it on and you already know what to do. So you don't really need this video. But with that being said, let's move on to the movement tab, which also has some interesting settings that do need to be changed to benefit your gameplay. And first up, obviously, we have the sprint assist option. Now, I have my sprint assist as on. It just feels the most snappy and responsive to me. Maybe for you, it feels a little bit different in game. But for me, this feels the best. And I have the assist delay at zero. This makes it so immediately you start sprinting just instantly as soon as you're walking. It feels much better. And I also have the sideways and backwards options turned on. Mantle assist I have turned off. At no point do I want to climb anything really unless I'm in control of climbing it. The same with the crouch assist and the corner slicing. I don't want to do any of this behavior because it's the game moving for me rather than me moving. It's not great. Hybrid is going to be probably the most beneficial option for most players in Black Ops 6. However, with that being said, I hate it. I hate it. I like the slide only option and it feels more like Apex. So if you're an Apex player and you've been playing Apex for the last few years, try the slide only option because I doubt you're going to be diving at all. Anyways, auto door peek. Again, I don't ever want to do any of these weird automated animations. They're just not great. However, airborne mantle, I do like. I, if I'm diving across something, I want it to grab onto that and bring and carry me over. It's just what I'm doing. Sprint restore, you do want on. This allows you to resume sprinting after almost every action in the game, so it's huge. And slide maintaining sprint, again, a huge option that you need to turn on. Free fall for parachute in Warzone, that's up to you. I mean, most people are going to have free fall enabled and mantle cancels reload me i like to be able to cancel my reloads i don't know how about how you feel 
but from my point of view, canceling your reloads is important. And finally, we have some movement advanced settings, and we're going to have toggle sprint as the option rather than hold because we're trying to reduce wear and tear on the controller while gaining the most benefit. Auto move forward, turn that off. Again, you don't want any automated movement in the game. That's not good. You want to be in control. Single tap to run, which is huge. This means that you will start tactical sprinting pretty much immediately, and it moves that excessive button mashing to your controller. Again, huge on longevity of your controller. And plunging underwater, trigger or free look. This is up to you. Choose what you like, as well as the sprinting door bash. I mean, if you don't want to sprint through doors, then don't. Now, we do have some vehicle behavior that we can look over, and I don't intend to drive very much, but I do like the vehicle control mode with driver control. I like the independent feeling where it doesn't feel like I'm doing the same exact thing. It just makes me understand what I'm doing. And I like aim-based controls for score streaks because obviously you're going to be aiming the score streaks quite a bit. And vehicle camera recenter, the short delay, is an okay option. I just like it because it looks a little bit better on recordings, but I would suggest having it almost off as the better option in general. And the camera initial position free look so that when you're in the vehicle, you're pretty much where you're looking already. And the lean out activation, we're going to have melee finishing move and body shield. So. You can pretty much do whatever you want there in that regard very much a better option and that brings us finally to the combat tab which again does have some important settings but honestly compared to the other ones maybe not nearly as much aim down sight behavior you want it to be hold toggle just feels weird i've been playing call of duty so long that was just not going to work for me the weapon mount activation ads and melee i like that i think it feels better as well as the dedicated melee weapon activation to hold the melee. The armor plate behavior, I like applying one at a time. Again, I don't like the automated animations. So if I want to do one plate and I have, you know, the availability of two, three, etc., I don't want to spam them on. I see Vortat Nation. I want to blow them all up at once. I don't want to have to do one, two, three, four. It's a great idea for missions in the game you know like campaign but it's not great for multiplayer in multiplayer i want to blow up everything and cause a huge ball of fire equipment behavior we're going to go with hold i just find it to be a little bit better because it falls in line with shooting your adsing etc just makes more sense and the manual fire behavior i like the press option maybe call me old school but i don't know i like the press option the hold option just does not feel correct to me but that's just my point of view now under the advanced settings we're going to have the focus behavior set to hold which just makes sense the change up directional button from ping so that we can actually cycle through things etc make sure you set that up and then we're going to change the zoom activation to be sprint tactical and focus as well as the weapon mount set to short delay this again this is a recording setting you would want to go with off or instant in my opinion but i like to have a little bit of cinematic value when i'm recording tap to reload i know people are gonna be you know interested on this and probably some people will be able to use the prioritize options but i find them to be almost impossible to use and i like to be able to just tap my button to reload and hold it to interact with things it just makes more sense to what i've been familiar with in apex legends and just kind of makes more sense to battle royales that i've been playing for the last like eight years sprint cancels reload this one you may not like you may want to be running and reloading that's up to you i actually like being able to stop my reloads as i said before so i have that on ads thick swap this one I don't even know what to tell you on this one. If you can use this one, send me video of you using this because that's crazy. And the depleted ammo weapon switch I have off. I do not want any automated actions to happen to my character. And the body shield slash finishing move. I want to prior prioritize the finishing move, even though I know you guys would love to see more body shield action. And of course, we have the overlay settings for combat. 
which is kind of important, but not really. You know, the directional buttons over the stick for inventory control, ping wheel set to moderate, and again, the double tap danger ping, you know, moderate, wheel behavior, old, just it all makes more sense to me. So those are the settings that I currently have for the controller. And hopefully it's helped you guys out with a little bit of what's happening here in Black Ops 6, especially the players moving from Apex Legends over to Black Ops. This is something I've found to actually make the game a lot more enjoyable. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy. As always, have a good one.